Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel where we make pretty costumes and things. If you missed my last video, I have been making a Nandor the Relentless costume for my partner Topi. I am moving right along on the What We Do in the Shadows train onto Nandor's cloak. Y'all, this cloak is going to be epic. This is probably my favorite part of Nandor's costume, mainly because it allows me room to play with trim and beads and live my best life. But before we can get started, I need to find a very specific pattern. Years ago, I used to make Hobbit cloaks for my Etsy shop, and I thought that pattern would be perfect because they have a shoulder seam so that it will like sit on your shoulders and like look really nice up here, and then it obviously gets wider and more billowy at the bottom. The problem is my patterns are everywhere. I have some on this shelf here, in this box, and then I have a very large box up in my attic. Let's hope it is not in the attic. I do not want to go in the attic. No label. What could this be? Not the pattern. I think we have to go in the attic. Hello darkness, my old friend. <sighs> okay, so I'm not gonna take you up there because if you know, you know. While I was up there, I decided to grab a costume that I would really like to do another photo shoot in. It's this Rococo kind of gown here that I would like to try to do an outdoor sunset photo shoot in. This is the pattern. This one, this one, this is the pattern. This is what I went up there to get. Let's hope all the pieces are in it because guess what, I didn't check. Okay, so now we can get started. Okay, so I have my pieces cut out. They are rather large and I'm gonna show you the fabric that I chose in a second, but they are too big for my table and I will be working with velvet. So we're gonna have to <laughs> We're gonna have to live our best floor troll life yet again. I do not like the troll floor life. I will not be subscribing to this again in the near future. So I'll see you over there. <laughs> So all four pieces are cut out and now I'm ready to sew together the fashion layer of Nandor's cape clothing. But before we do, I wanted to share with you some tips about sewing with velvet, cutting velvet, and how to properly work with velvet so that you don't get that weird puckering or like any weird shiftiness because we all know that velvet is a shady queen. Velvet is a fibrous fabric that has what is called a nap. The nap is the texture of the fabric and describes which way the fibers align. With velvet, you can feel the nap it's softer. And you typically want to place your green lines going on the nap. You can decide to go the opposite way as long as all of your pieces are cut going on the nap or against the nap. When you work with velvet, every time you puncture it with a pin, you can leave micro holes that may be seen in the final project. So it's best to pin inside of your seam allowance. Since velvet is slippery, pins are not quite enough to keep the fabric from slipping around, so I hand based the pieces together, alternating between a long stitch and a short stitch. I do this inside my seam allowance as well. A walking foot is incredibly helpful to creating a beautiful stitch on velvet. I loosen my tension as well as stitch with a 3.5 millimeter stitch length using a 7011 universal needle and cotton thread. Okay, so I just found out that my machine has a walking foot, which is a um, sewing foot that is really, really helpful for velvet. And I just learned how to use it, so I'm gonna use it on this. I was having puckering issues on my velvet, and I'll show it to you in a second. And I just didn't like the way it was looking. We're gonna try the walking foot. I'll compare them, and yeah. Okay, so I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's wrinkling like it's puckering and that is totally because the tension is way too tight. I loosened the tension and then I was like maybe my machine has a walking foot and that's how I found out it has a walking foot. 
So we have moved on to this side. I'm gonna hand stitch this down and then bring it over to the machine and do the other side. I don't know if I'll get this done tonight because Toby is already on his way home and it took me at least 30 minutes to hand sew the first one. All right, let's talk about the difference between these two seams. So do you see this? This is without the walking foot and with really tight tension. And this, this right here, that's with the walking foot and with the tension loosened. Um, I think the tension is normally set at 3.5 on my machine and I dropped it down to 2.8. Um, I think I could do it at 3.0 and it'd be fine, but it still looked like it was a little puckering when I was at 2. Point, or at 3.0. Anyway, I just had to show that. I don't know if I'm gonna redo this one or not. I'll let you know in the morning. Hello friends, welcome back. This is the lining fabric and I have decided that this lining fabric with the actual fabric is way too like maroon and gold. Nothing against my alma mater, but you know, that's not the look we're going for. So I'm gonna pick up some dye so that I can dye this to get it a little less bright. I think I'm gonna get some brown dye and just do like a 10 minute dye bath. Maybe if it's not enough, I can do it again and dye it more. So we're gonna go to Joanne Fabrics. I'll see you at Joanne's. All right, Joanne's, I just need fabric dye and I'm gonna look at the Halloween fabric. I might allow myself to buy one fabric to make a dress out of. Hopefully I don't need anything else. I'm trying to like run through my brain to see if I need anything else, but I think that's all I need. So Joanne's, please don't suck all my money up because of your Halloween fabric. We got goodies. Okay, I'll just show you what I got because there's no point in waiting till I got home. I only got one fabric. Well, I got like white cotton for something else, but I got this. Ooh, so it's not like my normal color scheme, but like I'm open. I'm open to new new things. Um, they did not have the gray Haunted Mansion fabric that they, I was hoping they, were ha they would have. And I created a rule for myself this year that I cannot buy Halloween fabric that is not in store. So yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try it. It's it's definitely not a color I'd normally like wear, but let's let's give it a shot, right? Like, I also got dye. I got two bottles of dye in case the first one like doesn't do well. Okay, so I am home. Obviously, I've changed because I'm gonna be dyeing fabric, and I just wanted to wear all black so that if there's anything that gets on it, it's not really gonna like ruin it that much. So now let's dye some fabric. So I am gonna be using this dye. I'm gonna use a whole bottle for just one batch because it's like six yards of satin. And then I'm also gonna be putting some dish soap in it because it says in the instructions to put dish soap. So I'm gonna put dish soap in it. I'm also gonna rinse the fabric before I put it in the dye bath. I have water on the stove boiling, so I'm gonna get it to boil and put it in my bucket because I don't have a dedicated dye pot. I do need, I should look for that antiquing. Alex, if you're watching this, the next time we go thrifting or antiquing, remind me that I need a dye pot. Okay, so let's do this. It doesn't look too different, but you know what? It looks like less orange, which is a success to me. It does look very gold still, which is really what I wanted. Uh, if it was, I mean, I think I could have left it in for 10 more minutes, but I'm okay with this. This is a really good color. It looks almost exactly like the little like dots that are on his tunic. So that's pretty cool. Now I have to iron it because if you can see, it's a mess. So I'm gonna do that. Basically cut out another segment of the cloak, like do the cloak again. Hey, this looks really good. Like, I'm gonna steal this, I think. This 
might become my cloak. <laughs> um, okay, so it's sewn together. I do need to press all of these open before I attach it to the red, but we're gonna actually do some trim and beadwork on the trim before we sew this to that. I also need to get this on Toby's shoulders and put an elastic thing in here that will kind of hold it in place. I don't know how to explain it, but once I start doing it or once I do it, I'll show you and explain it then. But basically I want to sew the elastic in place on his shoulders on this before I attach it to that so that there's no seaming on the outside and that way I don't have to do it by hand. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I spent most of the weekend watching TV and hand sewing down the trim as well as beads on the trim. We watched Stranger Things, Umbrella Academy, and an entire season of RuPaul's Drag Race. So a lot of TV was consumed on this project, but I am at a good point where I can show you what the steps are for adding the beads and then we can move on to adding the elastic band that's going to hold the cape onto Toby's body and then finally we can sew the pretty velvet to the pretty satin and we will have a cloak. We will have a cloak by the end of today. We'll have a cloak in like five hours I think so let's go. I'm gonna start in the center of the trim design where I'm going to add a sequin and a bead. The bead holds the sequin on, although I could just stitch the sequin down if I didn't want the bead. I go through this twice to really make sure that it's anchored down. To add the bugle beads around the trim, I just bring my needle through to the top, place a bead down, and stitch back through the bottom. I repeat this process throughout the entire trim. like that for right now. Just a dressy. Basically, I just pinned elastic in his armpits, if you see there, that went around his back so that it would just like secure the cape or the cloak onto his body. Then we tested his movement to make sure that he could still lift up his arms and that it wouldn't like, you know, rub against his back in a weird way. Then he can just take it off or put it on just like you would put on a coat but without actually putting like your arms in sleeves. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I am going to be saving the full like costume reveal for another video when I finish Nadja, mainly because I ordered a beer makeup and I still need to style a wig for Nandor. And I think that it will just have a much larger impact if I save it and do like a full vampire reveal. So make sure that if you would like to see that to feel free to subscribe to my channel. The next video that I will be making is actually going Going to be on making the famous Met combinations. I have wanted to make these for years and they definitely fit in the 1890s and I figured this Naja journey is a very big deep dive into 1890s undergarments so let's just do it. Let's make this the opportunity. I'm very excited to share that process with you all and just a huge thank you to everyone for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I have been absolutely loving Loving this project. It's been so much fun for me. Velvet is still not like my favorite thing to work with, but the more I work with it using a walking foot, I can't believe I've never used a walking foot before and it's changed my life. I'm just so, I feel really good about this project. I do have one thing that I need to admit to you all that I forgot to do and you'll start to notice it in videos and things. So I just want to admit it right now. I forgot to allow the satin layer to hang 
so that it would stretch out um, because it's cut on the bias or parts of it are cut on the bias because of the shape of the cloak it will naturally like start to hang and warp and I completely forgot to do that for the satin layer I did it for the velvet layer so the the hem is gonna get really wonky and I do apologize maybe at a later date we will take the hem apart and fix it I, I don't know I don't know how that kind of works but I just wanted to be very like honest with you all and also kind of remind you so that you maybe don't go do that at home but anyway thank you seriously so much for watching these videos I'm really enjoying this fun vampire project and I just I can't wait to get into Nadja I'm sure most of you are more excited for Nadja than you were for Nandor but like I can't wait it's gonna be so fun I've got quite a few videos planned because I am making the undergarments and I'm trying all new patterns for this well mostly new patterns for this so anyway that's it for today's video I really do appreciate appreciate you all watching this and honestly without you like I wouldn't I wouldn't continue to make these videos so thank you all so much and until next time may all your dreams come true um, Eva shh. what is going on Eva's barking they're chopping down trees planes are like going nuts <sighs> years ago I used to make clock I love the dresses. Yes, you love the dresses, don't you? Like, oh, please. Oh, please. I just want to be in a dress. Oh, please. Dear.